Sit down, Maria. I want to talk to you. Yes, Reverend Mother, about last night. I was on my knees praying most of the night because I was late, and after you'd been so kind and given me permission to leave. It wasn't about your being late, Maria. I must have awakened half the Abbey before Sister Margareta heard me and opened the gate. Maria, very few of us were asleep. We could only think that you had lost your way. And to be lost at night on that mountain. But I couldn't be lost on that mountain. That's my mountain. I was brought up on it. It was that mountain that brought me to you. Oh? When I was a little girl, I used to come down the mountain, climb a tree, and look over into your garden. I'd see the sisters at work, hear them singing on their way to Vespers. Many times I went back up that mountain in the dark, singing all the way. And that brings up another transgression. I was singing yesterday, and I was singing without your permission. It's only here in the Abbey that there's a rule about singing. But that's the hardest rule of all for me. Sister Margareta's always reminding me, but too late, after I started singing. And the day you were singing in the garden, at the top of your voice. But Mother, it's that kind of a song. I came to the window, and when you saw me, you stopped. Yes, that's been on my mind ever since it happened. It's been on my mind, too. I wish you hadn't stopped. I used to sing that song when I was a child. But I can't quite remember. Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens, white copper kettles and warm woolen mittens, brown paper packages tied up with strings. These are a few of my favorite things. Cream colored ponies and crisp apple strudel, doorbells and sleigh bells and schnitzel with noodles, wild geese that fly with the moon on their Schnitzel with noodles, while he's the 